On this edition of Influence Living, you're going to meet a fellow by the name of Sasson. Now, Sasson is from Israel, and he's going to tell you a, a story of a tremendous vision that he had. And then you're going to meet Christine. She was running from something, and then she found it. And then finally, you're going to meet Fred Stokes. He is NFL Redskin Super Bowl champion. He's going to tell his story. All that and much more right here on Influence Living. Welcome to this edition of Influence Living. I'm your host, Wade, and here on Influence Living, we love to travel around the world and, and ask individuals, what has influenced your life? You know, have you ever noticed that some people, even though life can be chaotic around them, the economy can be collapsing and things can be going on, they're still just steady? Nothing seems to shake them? Why is that? What is influencing people like that? Well, we've got three such people right here on today's edition of Influence Living. The first person we're going to talk to is a fellow by the name of Sasson. Now, Sasson served in the Israeli Defense Force and, and certainly has gone through some things in his life and, and, and a lot of trouble that he's gone through, but something has kept him steady. He saw something, a, a vision that changed his life. He's going to tell you his story right now. I grew up in a messianic family from small age. I was born in Ukraine. We moved here when I was a few months old. So all my life I've been here in Israel. So I am Israeli. Even though I grew up in a messianic family, uh, I was not exactly a believer. I was going to school, to high school. I was shameful from being, being a messianic. In my culture, to, be, to, to believe in Jesus, it's like to, to betray your own people. And so, I was not sharing with my friends that I am a messianic, so I would live the same way they would live. I used to smoke, I used to do a lot of troubles, a lot of stupid things, but I always knew who I am, but it was really hard to, to keep it open to others. I was ashamed of him, but at the same time, I knew that he is the way, even though I was living not as, as a believer. But it's been a long process to get to a point that I understood. When I was uh, 17, I was flying to youth camp in, in Greece. And it actually, that was a point that kind of changed my way of thinking. And I really experienced there Jesus. And when I was praying one of the nights, I really seen his face and I seen him just going among the young people there. And that was one of the signs that, wow, he is real, he is alive. And when I came back to my senior uh, year, I kind of started to be more open with my faith. I was still not, not speaking about it, but at least I felt that I'm getting more open with that. In age of 18, when I, I finished, when I graduated high school, I drafted to, to the army. And the army, it was, it, it was a point of my life that I said, that's it. I'm not gonna be ashamed of the gospel, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with everyone. I'm gonna preach everywhere, and I'm gonna say that I'm a proud to be uh, a believer in Jesus, to be a follower of Jesus. So in that moment, I kind of found my identity in him. And everywhere I was going, uh, I would speak to, to the soldiers, to my friends, sharing with them my faith, who I am, and, and what I believe in. And it was nice even to, to hear from them because I showed them that I didn't lost my Jewish uh, identity, that I am a Jewish. I, I'm celebrating all the feasts. I'm doing the same thing as them, but at the same time, I believe that Jesus is the Messiah and He's the Savior. And that's the thing that we changed it. During my service in 2014, there was an operation in Gaza for 67 days. Unfortunately, I was not inside, but I was just on the border to help the soldiers, the wounded, and just to help as much as I can. Unfortunately, I lost two of my friends there, that operation. And you know, for a believer to be in the army, it's, it's not so easy, especially if there is hatreds with the both sides. But of course, I knew that behind all these things, there is a spiritual sides. 
And I knew that our war is not against flesh and blood, but it's against a spiritual war. It was really hard after I lost my friends just still to, to show of the love of God, even though it really hard because I had to break my character and still say, you know what, I still love you, it doesn't matter what. And I'm speaking about the other side, about the Palestinian in Gaza. Uh, so that operation really changed my life and the way I think about life. And I had a few cases when I came home and I almost died twice from uh, the rockets that felt right close to me, but could really protect me. When I finished the army, I felt that I need to take a year off from everything just to, to get away. So I fly to Sweden to, to study in, in Bible College, just to kind of to be fresh in the spirit and just have a good time. And that year was amazing for me. It was just the best thing I did because I had a lot of a bottle inside of me. Should I go, should I not, should I stay? But God spoke to me, said to me, you should go there. And in that year, I, I had a lot of time just to be me, me and God alone, just this intimacy to be one-on-one. -on -one. And it changed my life too. And it put so much of desires in my heart, especially to work with young people, especially to show the light of God in the nations and of course in my nation. And today that's what I'm doing and that's what I'm trying to do. And just to be a real follower of Jesus. And how we do it is actually with being a light of God and show His love. Because I think with love you can do everything when you have His love in your heart. So yeah, that year after I finished it, I came back home. I met my wife 10 years ago, but we grew up together, but we never had anything. But God showed me that she is the one for me. And then God spoke to me to start to work with youth. And God is opening doors to, to fly to countries to share uh, the true news about Israel. And that's what I'm doing today. So it's really amazing to see the change that God did in my life and how He changed everything from being that to get to that point. From being shameful from the gospel to be proud of the gospel and from being lost to be found in His hands. Assassin's story is certainly interesting, isn't it? A member of the IDF and, and, and as a young man, he believed that Jesus is Messiah, and certainly that caused him some problems because in that part of the world, uh, uh, some people that believe that way aren't very well accepted. He saw a vision of Jesus, and he believes, and I believe, and he's experienced that Jesus Christ is God. And there's only one way to God the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus said. Actually, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. So either Jesus was lying, or he's telling the truth. Some people say that Jesus was a good prophet, but the problem is, is a good prophet doesn't claim to be God unless he is. Jesus says that you could come to God the Father through him. Sasson made a decision to receive Christ into his life, and he would have prayed a simple prayer, would have simply said this to God, and, and you can do this right now. You, you, you can just say this to God. Even if there's other people around, say it in your heart to God. You don't even have to say it out loud, but you've got to believe in your heart that Jesus is Messiah, that Jesus is God. And, and come on and say this with me. Uh, this is what Sasson would have done. He would have just said something like this to God. It's a prayer, it's communication to God, and you just say, God, I believe in you. I believe in Jesus. I ask Jesus to forgive me of my sins. And I invite you, God, into my life. I give you my life, whatever that means. In your name I pray. Amen. At Influence Living, we want to say congratulations. You just made a decision, the best decision of your life. Now begin to grow up in your faith. Find a Christian Bible, begin to read in the book of John and find out who Jesus is. Talk to God on a daily basis. He, he calls us his friend if we have relationship with him. And you've just opened that door to relationship. And then also, if you would, find a local Christian church and ask them to grow you up in your faith. Tell them you've decided to believe in Jesus as Savior, as Messiah, as God. You've made that decision. Ask them to help you as you grow up in your faith. If they don't, find another church that will. Ask them to assist you in that. 
We're so proud of you here at Influence Living. If you made that decision, we would love to hear about it. You see the details right there on your screen. There's our mailing address here in Orlando, Florida. You can just send us a, a standard uh, mail letter if you'd like to, or shoot us an email at wade at influenceliving.com. That email address again is wade at influenceliving.com, or, or uh, instant message us on Facebook. You see there, if you go to, if you go to Influence Living on Facebook, you can, you can catch up with us there. You can see other editions of Influence Living as well, and here's some other great influence stories. We would love to see you do that. One more thing before we go to the next segment here on Influence Living. Uh, men, if you're interested in a daily, a daily devotional for 39 days, then I've got a book for you. It's called 39 Stripes. I wrote it recently. You can go onto Amazon, $9 US. You can pick it up and they'll ship it to you. Uh, they would uh, love to put it in your hands. Just go to Amazon and purchase that book, 39 Stripes. Well, up next here on Influence Living, we're going to meet a young lady by the name of Christine. Now, Christine was raised to know God and around a church. However, she ran from God, but God caught up with her. Here's her story. I watched my parents grow up a lot, just um, worshiping God and, and trying very hard to, to do the right thing. And um, I, my biggest influence was my mom. Uh, I remember sitting there uh, during services and and just watching the Holy Spirit move in her life. And uh, she was such a, a powerful woman of God, and I knew that even at a young age. As I grew older, um, I really struggled with, is God real? Uh, even though I saw my mom and my dad both continue on with their, with their lives, I struggled, you know, does God really listen to me? Does he really hear what I have to say? And uh, eventually, by the time I was out of high school, um, I had gotten married. I married at 19, and I found myself in a really, really bad situation. Uh, the man that I had married was verbally abusive um, and eventually came, became uh, physically abusive. Uh, I had two small children at the time. My daughter was about 18 months, and my son was about two years old. I remember in the in my marriage, just always crying out to God, even though I, I, I struggled with knowing if he was there, I still cried out to him. I think in our, as humans, I think we think that there is a real God out there, even though we don't, we might not know him or of him or, or personally know him. Um, so when I came back to Orlando, uh, I started, I lived with my parents. Uh, I started a, a job um, at a, an amusement park here and um, from there, my, my life just started to spin out of control. I, I realized that it was God's will for me. Now that I look back on it, I realized it was God's will for me to actually go and be at this amusement park. But I was in entertainment, and in entertainment, there is a, a lot of worldly things um, in entertainment. I began to uh, drink and smoke, uh, began to cuss, which that's a big stronghold um, in somebody's life when, when they begin to say words, what's in the heart comes out of your mouth. I remember that I started dating somebody um, there and um, in the midst of this, as I would go to, to work every day, God was still there. I, I was still listening to Christian music. I was still listening to um, the radio station here that's popular. And a song would come on every single day that I would go to, to work. Um, it's by a very popular group, and, and the song talks about, um, can anybody hear her? Um, she's spinning out of control. Uh, can anybody see what she's doing? She's going in the wrong direction. She's running in the wrong direction. And um, I remember telling my mom and talking to her um, and asking, you know, what does this mean? Is God really trying to talk to me? And, and she said, no, you're going to have to go and you're going to really have to seek God and, and see what, what he's saying. And I just kind of sloughed it off. I didn't really even recognize it until um, the man that I was dating, he took me to a, a, a um, oh my gosh, I just blinked. He took me to a concert and it was not a Christian concert. There was lots of um, drinking and smoking and, and different activities there. I remember driving home absolutely out of my mind and I looked at the highway and I remember looking at the steering wheel and I said, God, if you're really there, you're going to have to show me. 
I cannot drive home. I don't know how to get home. I don't know where I am. I don't remember much, but I remember just at least getting home. I remember actually driving up to my um, driveway and pulling in to the house and uh, going and, and falling asleep. Um, I didn't sleep very well that night. Uh, the, the drugs that I had actually taken were very evasive on my system and I wasn't able to sleep. I wasn't able to um, really truly actually have a clear mind. And I opened my eyes and I sat up in bed and straight from my heart to the inside of my ears, I heard, get up and go to the church. Um, and at the time I was like, what, what, <laughs> who was that? You know, um, I actually called out, I said, um, I called my grandmother, Grandmommy, is that you? What was that? And the minute that I said that again, I heard, get up and go to the church. And I immediately bolted out of bed and I said, um, God, I know that was you. I, I heard your voice absolutely clearly as a bell. I know that was you. I got in my car, I live a mile away, I drove up here. And when I came inside, Pastor Marie was standing in the Northex and I opened the doors and I was looking at her with these big, big eyes and she's kind of staring at me and I said, I believe I was just told to come to the church. <laughs> and um, she said, yes, you have. And I said, okay. So um, from that point on, um, she prayed for me and God showed me a timeline, which I believe is a timeline. He showed me about 10 different things that I was involved in and how they had been just washed away by the blood of Christ. Um, that I had been delivered from sexual sin, drug addiction, um, anything and everything that you could possibly think of that I, that, that's in the world. Now I'm just waiting on what he has for me and, and what he's doing and I can't explain the joy and the, and the happiness that I have now, now that Christ is in my life. And, and I'm a complete different person. I look back at, at pictures that I that I had, you know, when I was not only when I was married, but um, even just a few months before God actually radically changed my life, um, I can see a difference. There's there's a spiritual change uh, inside, behind the eyes, inside behind the heart, behind everything. Well, I just want to remind you that you're watching Influence Living. I'm your host Wade. Thanks so much for watching. I trust that you enjoyed Christine's story. And then now up next, we've got somebody that you're really going to enjoy. He's, he stands about six foot five, 265 pounds. And I cannot imagine a man like Fred Stokes tackling me on the football field. He play, played for the NFL for several years, won a Super Bowl ring, and my, uh, how God has influenced his life. Fred's gonna tell you his story right now. Listen to it. So my life is very interesting because, uh, but it's not like any other um, football player, any other person, any other man. Uh, that's out there, and I think um, you know there's there's statistics that show that you know where where people who are very successful uh, financially or otherwise, uh, a lot of those people came from meager beginnings, and some of them came from places where you think nobody successful uh, could come from that place. Uh, I, I'm not that guy who can say, you know, I pulled up myself up by my own bootstraps. I don't think that exists. Uh, nobody gets where they are by themselves, and and uh, I have a very interesting story, but I don't think it's unlike anybody else's story. I just have a unique story that, that God has used uh, to get me where I am today. I was raised in the church. Uh, my great aunt and uncle, uh, w when I was born, my mom had never met these guys before, but they came into her life, and she allowed them to, to help her or nurture me in my early years. And because they were so wrapped up into their relationship with Christ, I went to church all the time. My great aunt gave me scriptures to read. She, every day she would anoint my head with olive oil and pull a, put a cross right here. Every day she would take the a cap of that same olive oil and she would put it in my head. And every day she'd pour a cap and she'd make me, t she'd, uh, make me take some. And I believe that because of the anointing that was placed on my life and the things that God has shown her to do, um, at an early age, probably 11 or 12, uh, I was in church one day, one Sunday, and I just felt the tugging in my heart uh, once the preacher had finished his message. And, and, I, and I just, I felt like that I couldn't stay in my seat. I couldn't stay where I was. I, I, it was almost like I was literally uh, not just compelled, but, but propelled forward to go to the front. And I, and I committed my life to Christ at probably 11 or 12 years old. I only played one year high school football. Uh, I just did, chose not to play football. I, 
I, um, I played basketball, I ran track. I did all the things the other kids do back in those years. Now kids don't, I mean, everybody wants to specialize, but we played all the sports. When basketball came around, we played basketball. Uh, it's just that I had got myself in a bind. I, I wanted to be in the band, and I chose to be in the band in the, I think about the sixth grade, and I could still play football. But when I got in the eighth grade, uh, our eighth grade team, uh, because our school was so small, it had to go, the middle school eighth graders had to go to the high school. And so as an eighth grader, I'm walking around with high school kids and I did the high school things, meaning that the band played at halftime. And because I was in the band in those days, I couldn't play in the band and play on the football team. So I had to make a choice. And, uh, and something happened, I won't bore you with all the details, but my hormones were changing, my, my testosterone level was going up, uh, my eyes were open to girls, and, uh, and we took a trip, I think, to Disney World, and it was such an awesome trip uh, that when I got back, I thought, I'm staying in the band. I don't want to go to the football field, because <laughs> all the pretty girls in our school was at the, in, the, in the band. And so I stayed in the band from the sixth grade until the 11th grade, I actually through the 11th grade, and then uh, my senior year, I chose to play football. And the only reason I played was because it was my senior year. It wasn't that I was thinking about going to the pros. It wasn't that I was thinking about getting a scholarship. It was just my senior year, and I just decided to play football. Uh, how did I feel when I actually stepped out on that football field for the Super Bowl? It was overwhelming. I, I, it, was, it was so many emotions going through my body that um, I, I, it, it was, it's indescribable. It's, it's, you know, here I am walking on this football field and actually running out of the tunnel and, and thinking there's millions of people watching this game and all of those things are going through my brain. But once that first play happened and I got an opportunity to, to make contact, it was just a regular football game. It, it, was, a, it was amazing. And then to, to play in the game is one thing, but having, having play in it and then win it. And there's, there's confetti falling, there's people running around, there's lights and and people hugging you and congratulating you and you're doing the same and in your mind it's like it, it's everything is going like you guys want to, it's, it's slow motion is the super bowl everything if your life begins and ends with sports then that's all you have and uh and that's all it is but but to me it was just another game it's just another game it's just another opportunity where god allowed us to be on the field, to, to showcase who he is, and to glorify his name. And so, yes, I won the Super Bowl, I have a Super Bowl ring, but the Super Bowl ring is not who I am. It's what I've done. And that's not who I am, God made me. I'm Fred Stokes, I'm from a small town in Georgia. Um, I'm a man of God, I'm a husband, I'm a father. I'm a lot of things. Um, and, and that's why I read my Bible every day so that I can hear the voice of God in my head to tell me who I really am. Because I heard somebody say that when you know who you are, you know who you're not. For, for anybody that's watching this and, and they're thinking to themselves, how do I get right with God? And they're seeing my story and maybe they, they're compiling my story with all the other tens or hundreds or thousands of stories that they heard and they're saying, yeah, but that's your story, Fred. How, how do I get right with God? What is my story? And I would just say that wherever they are in the world, wherever they are in life, if you sincerely believe in your heart that God came to this earth, he lived the life that we should have lived and he died the life that we should have died in our place. And he was raised, a day, raised on the third day with all power. And he's given us an opportunity where we don't have to have a mediator. We don't have to have anybody step into our place. We can say to God, right where you are and say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins. And I want to accept the free gift of life that you've offered to me. I want to walk in a different path. And I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That person, wherever they are watching this at right now, can be saved today. And if they die tonight, we're going to see each other. I don't care how much damage they've done in their life in the past. I don't care what kind of uh, issues they've had. If they believe that today, then they're saved. They're my brothers and sisters in the faith. I trust that you enjoyed Fred Stokes. Very few people have made it to the level of professional sports as Fred Stokes has, and, and winning a Super Bowl ring puts him on top even. He's, he's had success, he's done it all, he's had fame, he's reached the top of his athletic career, and, and after a, uh, being an athlete, he's, he's got his own business and all that he has going on, and you would think just being an athlete and being that level would be enough. 
but he still found out that there was a great hole in his heart. And so you heard his story of how he made Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior, allowed God to influence his life. And my, what a difference now Fred Stokes is making in the lives of others. I've heard him and watched him as he spoke and, and reached into other people's lives. He travels the country here in the United States and other places around the world uh, speaking to individuals uh, about, his, about his journey. You know, maybe, maybe you'd say, you know, uh, I, I, I've reached a certain level of success, maybe as an accountant, as a lawyer, as a teacher, as a business owner, whatever it is that you have accomplished and you have also found that it's very empty. Then, then I'm gonna suggest to you that you can keep reaching accomplishments, but you're going to always feel empty unless you fill the void that is in all of us that only God can fill. There is a God-centered hole in all of us. Nothing will fill that. You were created with it. There's only one thing that will fill it, and that is God himself. He longs to have a relationship with you, not a religion, not a church denomination, not a bunch of traditions. He wants relationship. He wants you to return to him, to that place that you were designed to be. And here's how you begin a relationship with the God of the universe. That is through Jesus Christ, his son. Jesus, who is God, said this, there's no other way to the Father except through myself. That's what Jesus said. Belief in Jesus is how we begin a relationship with God the Father. And here's how you begin that journey. Just simply say this, this simple little prayer with me. Prayer is nothing more than just communicating to God. You don't have to say it out loud. You can say it at your heart. You can say it out loud with me. If you're watching this at your computer all by yourself, maybe, or if you're watching this at home, wherever you're watching today's edition of Influence Living, you can just simply say, come on, say it with me. Say, dear God, I need you. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're the way to God. I know that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I invite you into my life. In Jesus' name. If you said that for the first time at Influence Living here, we want to say congratulations to you. We're so proud of you. You have begun that relationship and that void now is filled. You're going to fill just a load off of you. The sin, the junk that you've been carrying your whole life, you didn't even know you were carrying. All the concern, the anxiety, gone. Jesus is carrying it. He says his burden is easy, his yoke is light. In other words, the things that, that we carry, we give to him. And you've just done that. Congratulations. Here at Influence Living, listen, we encourage you to do a few things. Number one, talk to God on a daily basis. Number two, begin to read about who Jesus is in the book of John in the Christian Bible. Go to a Christian church. Say, listen, I need you to raise me up and grow me up in my faith in Jesus Christ. If they don't help you, find another one that will. If we can help you as well, shoot us an email at wade at influenceliving.com. If we can offer you some advice, pray with you or something like that, there's my email address. You see it right there on your screen, wade at influenceliving.com. Or you can write us a letter at our Orlando post office box. You see the details right there. Or um, catch up with us on Facebook, Influence Living on Facebook, and you can instant message us there. We would love to help you out if we can. Hey, one more thing now before you leave today, and uh, that is that if you're ever in the Orlando, Florida area, in southwest Orlando, I pastor a church by the name of Greenway Church. Go to greenwaychurch.com to find out our service times on Sundays. We'd love to have you there. Three services in English, one in Spanish, and uh, I preach in all of them. I'd love to have you there. Well, that about does it for this edition of Influence Living. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time right here. Take care. Bye-bye.